What up, everybody? Everybody, what's up, everybody? In, in, in. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm here with my man, Sweet T, a.k.a. Little Bro. Can't, well, Younger Bro. Can't mm -hmm. say little, as you can nope. tell. Nope. But welcome back to another What's Up, Everybody podcast. We're going to be talking about some fights today. We are. Some sick fights, great finishes, amazing main card, and new heavyweight champ. Insane. All that and more are coming up right now. But remember, guys, if you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button like the video and yes. leave some comments down below that all that good stuff the good helps stuff. out with the channel yes man let's, let's get after this thing let's do it we're jumping right into it so your your weekend how was it how was your weekend how it was, was your... good um busy oh yeah. my goodness busy as you know you're here with me 24 yeah. 7. Uh, we had yeah. exams right we had belt black promotions. belt clubs right belt, belt promotions, promotions yeah. here at the school yeah. a lot of kids moving up in rank so that was crazy uh, Friday, I, I got on, not only did I teach classes, but then I got on the UFC Twitch and did a two-hour stream there, two-and-a-half-hour stream. And what do you do there exactly? For, yeah. for maybe people who are watching and they aren't sure. Yeah. So for, for you guys that aren't sure, like hopefully you hit me with a follow on Instagram because I, I let everybody know when I'm going live on the UFC Twitch. I have my own Twitch, you know, twitch.tv slash wonderboyfaith, mm -hmm. but I also host the UFC Twitch and we get on there, we talk about fights, we watch fights, we break down fighters, and um, I show a lot of cool techniques on there uh, as well. And it's um, usually pretty relevant to the the fight the next day. Yeah. So it's not just, not for the most part, it's it, you're breaking it down fighters who are fighting on the next night. Yeah, so this Friday, card. I obviously did Tyron Woodley, Vicente Luque, Sean O'Malley, uh, Almeida, and of course, Stipe and Naganu. So yeah. we watched their fights, discussed it. We, you know, talked with the fans. It's just another way of kind of hanging out with fans and watching fights. So it's pretty cool. Awesome. And now, do the do the fans actually get to watch the fights? N uh, they on the do. screen with yeah, you. Yeah, they actually. So yeah. you're it's showing on fight the pass. screen, and you're. Yeah. So all the fights you're watching are already on Fight Pass. Yeah, these are previous fights. It's not live. Got you. Got you. Got you. Can't got do you. that. That's pretty cool. But I did that Friday. Um, Saturday. We'll also, go. wait. What, what else did you get Friday? Oh I had yeah, to, dude! Had the ninja in there. Uh, I should have brought it with me today. You did. My as I was on stream, did. I didn't you even should've. hear my bro, Sweet Tea, come up behind me. But my Sneaking from my management in. team, I got the 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 still remaining and still, and still uh, NMF belt. I NMF. got a new one for UFC Vegas 17. Yes, you did. And yeah. I waited. It was perfect because whenever I snuck in there, it was perfect timing. As I heard you. Singing, your you were just starting to watch your first fight with Woodley. Yeah, because you were walking out and one you were singing one. So I knew there's no way you were going to hear me. No, I was all headphones were blaring. You were borderline yelling into the mic because your headphones were so loud. <laughs> there's no way this. Could dude's you hear my headphones as I had them on? Yeah, yeah. There's no way this dude's here hearing me right now. So worked out perfectly. Yeah, dude, I got the new and still NMF belt. It's yep. pretty sick. Pretty cool stuff. You'll probably so. see that in the background of some Twitch streams, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. So when you head over there, make sure you check that so out. So busy Friday. Uh, we got some good collabs in. We, we got did. Some, we got we my did. man Icy Mike. I recommend yep. you guys go checking his channel out, which was really, really cool. And yeah. Sensei Seth, we collabed this past weekend. We it was did. A lot we got fun. some cool footage in with those guys. So with be checking guys. the stream. Be checking the channel, y'all. Got some good stuff coming at you. Yep. Always. Always. Um, and then, obviously, we had the huge night of fights. Yeah. Man. I went back on the UFC Twitch with Jens Pulver and uh, Calvin uh, Cater. Cater. Yeah. Calvin Cater. And we just hung out and watched the fights, man. Basically did a, a fight companion, but yeah. on the UFC's Twitch channel. Um, didn't get to watch the fights, obviously, because it was a live pay-per-view event. But they had – it was a cool setup. I hopped on it was for, really cool. for a little bit. And you had you, Jens Pulver, Calvin Cater – Plus, you had the fight stats in the corner, yeah. which was cool. That was cool to see all the significant strikes and stuff happening live. And in the middle was the um, fight time, so you could sync up with them and watch the fights essentially while they're commentating. Yeah. If you wanted to hear them instead of fun, the typical, you know, Joe so Rogan was, DC I was, stuff. I was watching. I was watching fights with fans and 
two UFC fighters, one former UFC fighter, UFC yep. champ. Actually. Were y'all were y'all interacting with the chat as well, or was it? Oh uh, yeah, we were, we were, because there was at one point where we were still alive, and Calvin, I guess, thought it was a break, and he goes to the bathroom and pee, and everybody's like <laughs> making fun of him, listening to him pee in the toilet. <laughs> you could hear it. Everybody was like, "Tinkle, tinkle, Calvin." <laughs> it was hilarious. Dang. It man. was his birthday too, so I got to sing him happy birthday on oh, the channel. You did, huh? Yeah, I went hardcore. Sounds legit. Yep. Saying happy Sounds birthday legit. and Mama Cater's birthday as well. Mm -hmm. So happy birthday, you two. Yep. And so for yeah. those for those wondering too, I just got to say this real quick because I see the the round right there. We did do the Kentucky Ballistics collab, oh, yeah. but we're you know we're we ran into some hiccups with that production, but it's still on the way. So um, I know we were supposed to get it out Friday, didn't happen. Ran into some issues, ran into some things. So we're we're still putting it out. We're still working on it. So don't worry. Yeah, it's still coming, guys. And I recommend go checking that out. We got some really good content coming at you guys we coming do. up. We got so, some really cool stuff. Some fun stuff, some some martial arts base, and some just having some fun. Just some having some fun. So back back to the fights, though. Yeah. So if you weren't able to watch the fights, you probably know what's already happened right by now. Um, but if you haven't and you're one of those people who will just not look at any media so you can watch yeah. it whenever – we're going to spoil it for we're you. Spoil it. But spoiler alert. Anyways, I doubt anybody needs that, but just a heads up. So we had UFC 260 headlined by Stipe Miocic taking on Francis Ngannou for the second time, challenging uh, Ngannou challenging for the heavyweight world title. But you had a great uh, few fights before that. Yeah, we'll start with O'Malley, man. Start with O'Malley. He was <laughs> kind of like the first big name on the card that – Really, really got things going. He did, man. He and he, boy, did he. There was a few times in this fight where the fight could have been finished. Mm -hmm. You know, you could tell he he had knocked down Almeida and walked away, and Almeida yep. recovered real quick. He was like, "Oh, dang it, he didn't go down." You know? Yeah. It was, yeah. He, he, he was fighting. Off. He was fighting a very durable um, yeah. Thomas Almeida, who it, it you know, a, he he was on a super hot streak for, for a while. while. Um, so he he's nothing to you know kind of he's no slouch no slouch no slouch exactly and O'Malley had him hurt off early the thing was I was so impressed with it it was kind of like the classic boxer versus like because O'Malley kind of has just an awkward style almost like you know people were referring why, to his why is movement. it awkward what what makes it awkward I mean well his hands are down he, it's, it's very similar to mine wide stance hands down. He switches sides. He's got tremendous feints. He's very long 135-er. I mean, he's very tall. He is tall. a big 135-er. Yeah. He Super is long. tall. And you could just see the height difference, the size difference between him and Almeida. Yeah. It, it, he looked – he just towered over him. Yeah. But you could tell that, you know, he had frustrated – his style frustrated Almeida mm -hmm. tremendously. He just couldn't find himself. He couldn't find himself. He couldn't find his range. Every time he stepped in, you know, you had um, – Sugar, you know, O'Malley, you know, taking that half a step back or uh, taking a, a slide to the left, a slide to the right. Got a front kick coming at you. Wait a second, spin hook kick. Wait, 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 spin back kick. Or fake it. Or fake it. I'm going to fake a spin. And, yeah. And it was just, just super – you can tell that Almeida, uh, Almeida was just frustrated. He's never faced anybody like O'Malley before mm -hmm. with that kind of style. And just yep. the confidence that O'Malley had. That plays yep. a huge part. Huge, huge part. Yeah. Yeah, he's coming off a loss, but – it was due to Not an really. injury, right? It was due to an to injury. who a loss to who? You, you, you can't really. Say. I mean, it was a loss. Yeah, but, he lost. You know, had that dead still. foot going on, low calf kick. Yeah, it happens. and um, yeah, it was just it was it was sh sugar sugar Sean all night. The sugar show. Yeah, he definitely had Almeida frustrated. He, Almeida's a traditional looking, you know, fighter, MMA fighter. Yeah, the, the, he's he's really good at what you see a lot of people do but when you add that extra sugar if you yeah. will to your fight game it can throw a lot of people off because most of the people you're sparring in the gym fight like Almeida most of people or fight like yourself most of the people you're training with yeah. most of your coaches have that traditional Thai boxing boxing background so that's what you're used to and then you have somebody who is as confident as O'Malley because you got to be confident in order to fight the way Have that to. he does and you do in your ability because it looks like you're leaving yourself open, open. a lot. And yeah. if Hands you're not down. confident in your style, then you're going to get clipped. You're going to get caught, and it can be a terrible style. But you have those few guys who are comfortable um, 
with that, with that awkward with that movement, you know, it movement is movement and style and stance. And uh, if you're not used to that, if you don't have somebody constantly showing you that in the gym, you know, in front of you, a sparring partner that has that, you don't, you'll have no idea how to handle that when you're out there. It's very difficult. You can bring in people all day, but when you step out there and actually feel it, who, who's like somebody like O'Malley, who's a master at it, it's yeah. uh, it's you you end up putting. Your opponent, like O'Malley, ended up putting Almeida in a box, and he just didn't know what to do. Yeah. he, he, he For a while there, he was kind of trying to land his spot, trying to find his range. But then he, since he couldn't do it, he just kind of sat back and was taking shots. Like, he had mm-hmm. no idea what to do. And he would do the typical duck the head and try to swing, swing. into range, and yeah. that's when O'Malley clipped him with a beautiful short left hand or right hand, it whichever right it was, hand. stepping back. No, it was a left hand. It was a left hand. Step back, left hand, and then that was the beginning of the end, and then that yeah. brutal bomb to finish it off. Boom! He even said at the end of it, he said it was unnecessary, that bomb at the end. They should, they should have stopped it, but still. You know, the yeah. referee didn't jump in. He hit him with that bomb. Well, because he had already gotten up one time. Yeah. So he you, had already you can't been let him get back up again. Dropped, and he had already gotten back up. Well, I mean, for the ref's sake, he had already seen Almeida get dropped and was able to get back up, and he fought into the third round. So maybe he thought, okay, he was rocked yeah, again. He'll he, get back he up. Can get, but he could get back up, yeah. and he didn't want to rob him of that. But, Shuga yeah, that was a – Hit him with an H-bomb. <laughs> hit him with the, with the, with the bath bomb. Yeah, yeah, sugar the bath bomb. bomb, the sugar bomb, the bath <laughs> bomb. The, the sparkle bomb. And uh, I like man. his character. He reminds me of uh, – what's that, what's that movie? Uh, Suicide Squad. You know how it starts yeah. off all colorful? You know, it reminds oh, me of yeah. the Joker. Yeah. He reminds me of the Joker. The, the Suicide Squad. But so. what's next for him? I mean, I think he should fight somebody in the top yeah, 10, he, top mm-hmm. guy, top opponent at this point. For sure. I'm, I'm glad really that he's sure working who. his way up slowly. You know, he's not jumping, you know, crazy up the ladder, and then he's getting smoked. He's taking his time. He's doing it right. Mm-hmm. You know, he's preparing himself, taking prime time in between fights to get better. Yeah. I'm sure he would love to fight somebody way up there right now. But, yeah. you know, he's got close connections with his coach. Tim and I'm sure they're they're he's he's eager he's willing to fight anybody but like you said he's working his way up yeah he's doing it right and when he gets to those higher level strikers he's gonna have the experience experience. because he's gradually taking those steps instead of going from Dan Stitchin to Matt Brown or yeah yeah that was definitely me and I yeah that was you that's why I said it out there yeah thanks man Uh, but I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for that fight. Yeah, you, you know do learn I mean? a lot from your losses. I uh, do, for I sure. try to anyway. But after that fight, we had my man, uh, you had Tyron Woodley versus Vicente Luque. Guys that I both fought. I fought both these guys. So we'll go out there. We'll, we'll go out there. We'll start with um, your thoughts on Vicente Luque. In that fight, what did, what did you take away? Did you see much difference from when he fought you last? Have you seen a lot of change? Kind of what were your thoughts on Vicente Luque only in that fight? Well, the, the thing that got me the most was the submission at the end. I figured he would just, you know, pound him out with ground and pound, finish mm-hmm. him with ground and pound. But yeah, he just decided to do a <clears throat> good old Dars mm-hmm. or Anaconda, whichever one it was, uh, and start yeah. and finish him. And with somebody, which makes sense. I mean, we got shoulders like like Tyron Woodley. You know, that's a lot of blood blockage going on. Your own bicep and or shoulder, you know, cut the blood off to your brain. It, it, uh, those kind of submissions work good on just bulky guys. Yeah. You know, if you can get if you can make it around them to. Yeah. You to can connect. tell he was struggling there for a yeah, second. He was like trying to. But that was the thing is that they were saying Woodley wasn't even trying to defend. He didn't even try to stop the. Well, I think he was so out, he was man. He was just to. had no idea where he was. Vicente Luque, he looked the same. Like the same fighter, yeah. he's just as durable as when I fought him, which I knew that was happening, yep. and that's the way he was going to win it. I mean, even if Tyron Woodley did hit him with his hardest shot, I knew that Vicente Luque was going to be able to take it and keep on pushing forward. And Tyron hit him with his hardest shot, and Tyron's, he didn't phase him. Yeah. He, he staggered a little bit but recovered very fast. And then Vicente Luque hit him with his power shot, but he couldn't recover. Tyron yeah. could not recover. It was like he hit him once, and he's just falling all over the place. You know, he falls up against the cage. Then, it, then uh, Vicente hits him again, falling all over the place again. And it was just – it, it was, wasn't good for Tyron, for sure. Do you think that has to do with age? Do you think that has to do with his genetics? It just Some people just can't take a punch like others. Do you think it had to do has to do with his 
longevity of his fight career? What do you think played the factor why Luke was so able to recover so quickly with that shot behind the ear, whereas Woodley, obviously, he was Didn't. hurt for a while? Yeah, I think that is has to do with body type. I mean, when I fought Vicente Luque, I've hit guys with half the power, and they've gone out. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it does help when you have a big melon like Vicente Luque. He's got <laughs> yeah. a big head. He even said it. He's like, I don't like to use it all the time, but if I – Need to use my durability, my chin there. Yeah, he is very durable and takes punishment well. He really does, man. And that's like his superpower. Yeah, he's got good striking, but his true superpower, he's durable. He's tough. And I think that is. It has a lot to do with body type and, you know, genetics maybe. I don't know. But yeah. it does seem like it. Yeah, you can have mental toughness, but when you get punched in the head without even blocking it and you go out and then you – the same thing happens to somebody else, and they just take it like a champ. I mean, that's, you know, it's like, it's got to be genetics. Yeah. You know? Who knows, man? I don't know, who man. Know, who knows why you were able to take multiple bombs from him and not go out? And, and then that little. Uh, yeah, and I guess it also has to do with placement yeah, as well. Yeah, uh, Where you get hit. Um, Maybe his was just right on the dot on, on Woodley. Wherever, yeah. Wherever that is. You know, I think he hit him, and it looked like it was the side of the ear, side of the head. It or definitely it was wasn't. Chin. A, it, I think it was. I don't chin. think it was a clean chin shot. I, I want to say it was more like side of the head. jaw ear area, yeah. where he he caught him with that. Because um, I want to say he threw a left a left straight maybe, and Vicente kind of ducked to the inside, and that's when he came with his right. So Woodley was was leaning over a little bit. It looked like it caught him in the jaw, jaw. Was, not straight chin, maybe ear. I don't know, but whatever he hit him with. He put him on skates for a minute. Yeah, but Vicente Luque looked like the Vicente Luque of old. Like, he looks like yeah. the same guy. I um, think when with you look added at a guy, submission. yeah, when you look at a guy like Vicente Luque, somebody who has the striking skills there, uh, the toughness, the changes those types of fighters usually make or, or can benefit most from aren't necessarily technically or physically, but mentally, like how yeah. they're, they're – able their ability to process what's going on in front of them and then use their tools that they already have to capitalize on specific opportunities yeah you know what i mean it's yeah. not like he needed to go back to the drawing board and rethink how he strikes and no nope. he he just needed to um get those reps in maybe to be able to process that information to use what he already has yeah to his advantage 100 percent, and it showed last night for sure I think he knew that he could break Woodley if he just stayed right in front of him. But Vicente Luque is the type of guy that he fights well coming downhill. And Tyron Woodley tends to back up. But mm -hmm. and during this fight, Tyron Woodley went after him right off the bat. Right off the bat. He was right super aggressive. Bat. Yeah, he super was. Super aggressive. Um, do, you, think, do you think Gilbert – do you think Luque training with Gilbert Burns, which is somebody who has, who has beaten Woodley, played, in the, played a huge, part? Huge part. You think so? Huge you think part. it actually made oh, yeah. a difference in how Vicente performed oh, yeah. against Confidence Woodley? Confidence-wise, for sure. When you're training with somebody that has beat him, not just beat him, but broke him, broke Tyron Woodley, that's a huge confidence builder for, for Vicente Luque. You know? I would think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that was a bonus for him. Yeah, my teammate beat you, and I trained with this guy. You know, yeah. we push each other, you know, of course. But you don't think, like, kind of the differences in their fighting style would, would maybe nullify it? A little bit. Gilbert's kind of like the the wild grappler, whereas Vicente is more of the technical. No, I, I don't think so at all. I don't think it, they got that deep into thinking that way. Just about like, hey, you my, beat him, yeah, you I, train no, with me, and then I'm gonna win. I'm gonna win. <laughs> yeah, maybe. You know, when we get somebody like Gilbert Burns talking in your ear and telling you little things, oh, you can do this, you can do that. You know, stick to your tools and you'll win. I beat him, you know, and you and you and you you never know. You know, you beat me here anyway, and I beat him with it. You know, yeah. you don't know how that plays out, how they do with um, with each other in the gym, who gets the best of who. Yeah. But I, I think that would just give you straight up confidence knowing your teammate beat him, so, and he's in your corner. Yeah. Got and Tyron to. Woodley, I feel like he tried, he 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 tried to get that fire right off the bat. You know what I mean? Like it's like a, I don't know, like a hill he was trying to go up right right in the beginning was that that spurt, and then. From then on, like once he got to the cage and he felt, um, you know, Vicente Luque's technical aspects up against the cage and how strong he is from mm -hmm. there, uh, he just kind of went downhill from there, back downhill, you know, yeah. his, for his confidence. Yeah, I mean, he he's he definitely came out on fire, 
And he's always been known as like this powerful guy who has obviously his bombs, but he people still say it, and they were saying it last night. He has the takedown ability. He has that wrestling. Obviously, he was mm-hmm. a tremendous wrestler in college. Um, but do you think he doesn't rely on it due to – exhaustive issues yes you think he's worried about his gas tank he knows how tiresome it is and he'd rather just knock somebody out or something guys with his body type you know just thick bulky bulky muscles tend to tire out because not only does he have big bulky muscles but he's an explosive guy and a lot of times those those type that body type they slow down they get tired Mm -hmm. You know, you see it. I mean, even what was it? Yo Romero uh, later on in his career in the UFC slowed down tremendously. was waiting a lot for fear of getting tired, I believe. Yeah. You know, uh, I know Nagano, when he first fought um, Stipe the first time, he burned himself out. He got tired. And you saw in this last fight, he was very calm, very collective, waited for his shots. You know, he's very very smart with his energy out there. Mm Mm-hmm. Gotcha. So... What's next for Luke, K, man? Oh man, I don't know. He called out Nate Diaz. Called out Nate. Called Everybody's out Nate. calling out Nate. I that, know. That's the, He's like the go-to guy. The to welterweight call out. money. Fight I've called right him out. <laughs> I know. Well, because it, he doesn't have a fight coming up. It seems like everybody near you, around you, is they're just not fighting anybody. They're not wanting to fight anybody. So it's like okay. I don't get it. Why? How are they? Even well, allowed to and stay Luke, up there? you got to look at Luke. He's looking down the line. He's got two people in front of him. That one, he's already fought you. Two, he's like his best friend, brother, and teammate, and Gilbert yeah. Burns. So maybe he's just like, it's hard for me to to tread those waters and and figure out who I need to call out because of you, because of Gilbert. So I'm just gonna call out Nate Diaz. Yeah, I don't know. It looked like he had his answer ready right when he was. He's called out Nate Diaz a couple of times. Though. Really? After his last fight, the Nate. Nate, I'm sure. What is Nate doing? Where are you at, Nate? You ain't answer nobody, bro. Nah, bro. He's that. He's that big money. He's yeah. that do do what he wanna do. He do what he wanna do type guy now. So but, I'm not sure, man. You know, you got him versus Jeff Neal would be awesome, but I think at this point in time, one. I think uh, Luke has already kind of won his way past yeah. fighting Jeff Neal right yeah. now. What is that? Two or uh, three fights win streak for him. Yeah. I fought. Already. I fought him. To, you know, I think Kiesa would be a good fight for him. Kiesa um, would be good. Neil Magny would be a good fight. Yeah, but he definitely needs you know somebody up there. He's probably looking at maybe even maybe even Damian Maya. You think? Yeah. Who's number know. eight? I don't know. What is Damian Maya doing? I mean, is he still know, wanting to fight? Man. He's still, he's still he's wanting still to fight. Ranked. He's still ranked. I don't think he's come out and said, hey, I don't want to fight anymore. Um, he's just kind of quiet. Yeah. So maybe you try to work that out. You get, you get two Brazilians. Maybe you do do something. I don't know. But he's earned his way up for sure. Yeah. The thing is. Rea- in reality, if he's not fighting Damian or if he's yeah. not fighting Neil Magny, it's going to be you, Gilbert, Leon. Yes, yeah. uh, and those guys up there do not want to fight. Yeah, like, oh man, I've been trying to call them out for the longest. Just so. a bunch of divas, man. I don't get it. But hey, uh, what's up with Tyron? What do you think he's gonna go? You think he's retired? I think it's that time, man. Yeah, I dude. mean, he turned. He turns. I, I don't use like to use age. Obviously, you got you, who's thirty eight, crushing it. Blahovich, who's thirty eight. Thirty eight. He's a champ. He's about to fight a forty one year old Teixeira for the belt. Who's been crushing possibly, it? Who's been doing really well. So, but but you you have age as a number, and then you have age as like just how long they've been in the sport type of thing. Like Jose yeah. Aldo is super young, but you would say he's old in terms of his fight career. Yeah. He's fought for so for long. so long. Dominic Cruz, even though he's like thirty three years old. Yeah, they've just been fight after fight after fight. I think Woodley's just in that spot right now like at the very least take some time off. yeah take some time off man take some time off and and really really just kind of do a full reset for however long you need yeah don't um, do anything don't even think about it really at this think point. about it but at the same time he doesn't necessarily have that luxury because he yeah. is 39 he turns well i think they said that he turns 39 in a few days really so wow i don't know man i think it's i think it's time I think it's time. I, I, a lot of people are saying it. Dana White's saying it. Um, I saw that recently, um, I think this morning. Uh, but I, I hate to see it, you know, because I fought the guy twice, and he was the champ. He was so dominant. He was so, so dominant, he, he was In strike dude. force and in uh, the UFC, just beating some legendary guys, man. I hate to see that. But you know what Either. I saw a lot of, though, in this fight? In the, in the fight? Mortal Kombat commercial. That was completely random. I know. I just thought of it. Mortal Kombat, the new one. It's about time. 
about time they redid the. Really about time they redid it. They redid the. With franchise. sketches about it, I, the, the, the CGI doesn't look that good. When I saw Jax's arms, I'm like. Eh. They're they're pushing it really hard for what seemed almost like it was kind of like a, a B rated movie. movie. Like almost like it because none of the actors are really familiar. There's one Scorpion. He played the, the last Samurai. Scorpion. Yeah, he, he's played in a lot of stuff. I've yeah. seen him in a lot of he's stuff. He's the only one. He's the main guy. Um, so they're pushing it hard, but I mean, I guess why not use it's a platform time. like yeah. the UFC to. Raiden looks dope, though. He actually looks like Raiden. Yeah. The other ones. I'm expecting old that fart. that part of the the new Mortal Kombat up to be amazing, way better than the old ones. And what's kind of sketchy is when he's like, "Oh, you have the tattoo," and it's literally a circle with a dragon. You know, and yeah. that tattoo is like a birthmark. Yeah. You know, I'm like, wait, yeah. what? Didn't even you like try to make it a birthmark. It's like it just is a circle with a dragon. Yeah, yeah, it's a birthmark. Oh, I got that birthmark too. I'm like, oh god, this better not be cheesy. Yeah, I'm still gonna see it anyway. Yeah, I'm gonna see, see it. See we'll it. talk about it yeah. for sure. And then also you got Godzilla versus Kong. Oh, I coming can't out. Wait. It, what this week? Wednesday. I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, this went. Oh my goodness, I can't wait. On for a that. Wednesday. Who you got? I guess Kong after after the pandemic, you can just start dropping movies on Wednesdays. Do you um, like the fact that they're doing it? Dropping these awesome freaking movies, uh, so like so you can just watch it at home. Immediately, of course, <laughs> you got to now. Yeah, but I, I do like a cinematic adventure. I like no, going it to is. the movies. It is. It's an experience. It's an experience that is has been missed. And but at the same time, I would rather see the movies than not home, see the yeah. movies. Yeah. If they're you know if it's either don't release them because no place is open or drop them so you can get them at home. I would take option B well, all I think day. theaters are open, aren't they? Well, I know where Some we are. places. Not, not a lot of them. Wow. I miss, I miss it. I miss going there. Finding what about your you guys? Spot. Yeah, yeah. Let us know, guys. Like, would you rather watch it at home or would you like every now and then to get, have that just that adventure of going out, getting your popcorn, finding Well, you seat. explain it to them like that. That's a loaded question. You're basically <laughs> coercing them into picking the, the, I mean, the movie the theater whole, experience. You know, like, oh, you would you rather watch it at home or would you rather go out to the theater, get the buttery popcorn with the treat and the extra large – Soda. It's not fair, dude. It is fair. You're at home. You're on yeah, your couch. Yeah, but you're couch. at home not you doing all that. Your, you're just sitting on the couch. You can make your popcorn. You can be. I you don't have so. to go anywhere. In your you in can, your robe or whatever you wear comfortably. You know. People love that. Maybe turn the fire on. Maybe. Ooh. You know. Ooh. Light a candle. That sounds phenomenal, dude. You've done this many maybe, times. Maybe light a light a a butter butter scented candle so you get that popcorn aroma. <laughs> <laughs> that pop Roma. That pop Roma. But uh, yeah, let us know. Do you Who, prefer going to the movies or staying at home and watching it right there in the living room? And and are you Team Godzilla or Team Kong? I have no idea. I'm Kong. Because after he beats Godzilla. I like Godzilla. Dude. I like Godzilla. Way to spoil it. After he beats Godzilla, what? What? I mean, he's Kong right now. Everybody knows his name is King Kong. Right? No, yeah, but then you said something after he beats Godzilla. Well, something. I don't know that. The movie's not out yet. But what I'm thinking is after he beats Godzilla, he becomes King Kong because he's promoted as Kong versus Godzilla. He's just Kong. Oh, I see, see what, what you're saying. saying and dude. then after he beats him, he's King Kong, King of the Monsters. Dang, dude! They just you know? they, they spoiled this movie a hundred years ago when they first made it and called exactly. him King Kong. It's, it's King Kong. And this it's is king how he Kong. becomes king. That's, yeah. a, that's a great way to think about it. Are there any other movies, anything else coming out that you're excited for? I think that's for? it. Those two, are, those two right now are the, the, the two. The, the two. Yeah. To be oh. honest, I've like fallen out of the new release movie game. Really? Uh, for the most part, because I don't watch like TV, everything. I stream everything. Yeah. And there's no ads or commercials, so very rarely do you see like coming soon. Well, I have HBO Max. I have yeah, Disney exactly. Plus. I have Netflix. I have Hulu. I mean, you're just the whole deal. So you don't deal. watch. So they don't. They don't advertise on those. They don't. If you they if don't. you have the subscriptions, but so I don't know what's coming out. I don't really see. I used to be into. That's it all why the I kind time. of brought that up because they, they were all out on the on the UFC event. That's like I did time. watch uh, Zach's uh, Snyder's cut. I Justice have not League. because I don't really know what it was. And it's way better. What is different about it? The is whole, it like the whole, whole scenario movie? is four hours and it's way different. So did they just take no CGI, no CGI Superman. Remember so did they, did they just reshoot a whole nother movie? No, no, no. So or it was the original it cut. It was the original movie. And I so think does Jack Superman Snyder, have a beard? like 
did something and they had another guy come in to finish it up. Like Steppenwolf looks way better. He looked so CGI the, the, in, the, in, the, in, the begin, in the first movie. Um, you know, the war uh, between man and Zeus and the gods versus you actually see Dark Side. He's part of that battle. You see more of the Zeus and those guys' powers fighting them. Like, they're super strong, bro. So why didn't they just release this right off the bat? I don't know. Why didn't I, they I don't make this no the movie they released? Because I did not like Justice League movie. This one's way better. Especially and you actually after see Dark Side. Dark Side looks dope. dope. Avengers movies and then the Justice we'll League, they the dropped time. that. It's like. Jinx, you owe me a soda. Wait, did I say. We said Avengers? dope at the same time. Did I say Avengers or Justice League movies? Uh, I think you said uh, Avenger movies. Avengers. Anyways, the Avengers were just killing it, and then oh, the man. Justice League comes out, and it's just kind of like <laughs> poo. What? Yeah, dude. But the, I always felt that kind of way with the DC movies is that they were always kind of rushed. It's like they just kind of came out of nowhere, and they were just like, all right, here it is, real quick, boom. Yeah, and it yeah. Was never it wasn't like, like over a, a span of twelve years or thirteen years. Like yeah, Avengers, you fall in love, like you spent, you you like you're spending that time like as if you're actually there. Yeah, years into the making, and that's why you just the ending was you just see, so and good. they they dropped all of the individual films, and then they incorporated aspects yeah. of all the individual films in the event. It was just amazing. Like I've watched, I've already seen um, Wandavision. Sick. I have not. Oh my gosh, it's great! And then I'm watching uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, which is I legit. am not, bro. You got to get on this game. What's going on? Are you still waiting for Stranger Things three, third season? <laughs> uh, what are you doing? No, I don't know, dude. I'm just, I don't know. So I would good. rather see those in a movie theater. No, you have to watch it. Yeah. Do you have Disney Plus? Yeah, I got, I got all. Bro, this what stuff, are you dude, waiting on? Sure. You know, need to get know. after it. What we need to do is know. come over to the house like we used to, and watch it. No, nah, dude, you're not welcome there. Oh, okay, thanks. Bro. <laughs> So anyway, so movies, man. Is there anything else you guys are looking forward to coming out? Anything like that? You know, I do miss going to the <laughs> movies. I do miss seeing all that stuff. Um, but at the same time, I guess I kind of don't mind not going out, having really the dress it dress up. It obviously and go doesn't out. bother me too much. Yeah. That I'm not seeing all these new films. I don't I like know. It. I'm too I busy like doing other stuff. You know, like, like YouTube yeah, and, kids stuff. and stuff. <laughs> and all that. So so anyways, we got one more fight to talk about on the UFC 260 card. Finishing up with Stipe Miocic versus Francis, the Predator, Francis Ngannou. Um, I say wow. Ngannou. Is it Ngannou or Ngannou? I believe it's Ngannou. I, okay. I've been saying so. it wrong the entire time. Always. You never know how to say names. <laughs> uh, it's okay, though. Um, so, again, back to you. Your thoughts. Show, tell me. Tell me. What was your initial thought? How, who was going to win it? Who did you think was going to win? And My initial thought was that Stipe was kind of going to go do what he did the first fight. You know, use the wrestling. Um, you know, him up against the fence, try and tire him out. I figured Francis Ngannou was just going to overdo himself, you know, tire himself out. And then immediately it was like the complete opposite. So you thought it was basically going to go exactly the same way as, as last the first time. one? I mean, I knew that I knew that Nganu had made some improvements, but also so was Stipe. I mean, been a lot of time since then. But I mentioned this before on on one of our earlier episodes. If there was anybody who could improve, who had the most room for improvement and most ability to improve, yep. it was Nganu. It was. It's like Stipe was already here and Nganu was down here. So if Stipe were to get better, he would maybe go up a little bit, but – I mean, Ngannou had well, all that room Stipe to cover. Well, I would say Stipe was here, and Ngannou was, like, right there, you know, in their first fight. Yeah, I mean, he, you know took, he did pretty well. And then now he's, like... After seeing that... Okay, maybe more, like... like there. For the first fight? Yeah. Yeah, that was more accurate representation, I Not think. Not here, but there. I believe that's more of a... Yeah. Yeah. I agree yeah. with you there. Thank you. But um, but then seeing the size difference, when you when they stepped on the octagon, that was, 30 That pounds, was shocking to me. Thirty pound difference. Thirty pounds, when, and when your when your game is wrestling as well. I mean, I know some people obviously Cain Velasquez had success with not being two hundred and sixty four pounds, and those guys who don't have to cut. Yeah. You know, you're you're obviously better off. You're, you're better physical shape. But when your game plan is rus wrestling, you need as much size as possible. A guy as in Ghana, I feel like you're you would need as much size as much yeah. size as you could possibly get for that. And it was a but. super, like, failed attempt to get to take him down. 
I mean, he shut that down quick. I mean, he and, and it but, was almost but like he didn't wouldn't struggle. Expect it was like, that though. Ugh. You know what I'm saying? Yes, but you he didn't. Why would he expect Ngannou to be able to do that? Like you said, he had experience fighting him the first time. He was able to run him across the cage, set him on his butt. Da 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 da. So, Stipe was, I'm sure, was just shocked, man. Yeah. He was afraid to get any any kind of, I think, hand exchanges, like, you know, oh, fist exchanges. Of course. Rightfully so. Then he goes for the leg, and then it wasn't even like it was close. Yeah, like he, he immediately He was like, oh, he almost got him down. No, it was like sprawl on top of you. And to see He somebody, lifted him up. He lifted him up and then sprawled it out oh like it was. God. And when you, when you see a guy like that big sprawl, it's weird. Like it, like you covered half the octagon just yeah, like, just when you down. sprawled. Yeah. And then not only that, but just the technical aspect of it, he sprawled. Next thing you know, he spun around to his back. To see a big dude do that, like with that speed, and then just starts wailing punches on him. I thought it was going to be over. Well, that was the beginning of the end there. You know what I mean? It was like, I was like, wow. I was in awe. Yeah. I was like, oh, my God, there's really no way he's recovering from this. Yeah, he, he landed his shots, and then obviously he they, they created space. He landed a big head kick. Like, what? He yeah. landed a head kick, which was insane. He was, he, like you said earlier, calm, calculated. He was patient. His shots, which was actually surprising to me, his shots in this fight, his strikes were a lot straighter. Mm-hmm. Then even his previous fight versus Rosenstruck, who was just like, you know, it, literally he just ran across the cage and looked like he was just clubbing at Rosenstruck and caught him. But now he wasn't was he working with a uh, Freddie Roach? Yeah, Freddie boxing. Roach. I think he did, he got some tips from Mike Tyson too. Yeah, he was doing everything he could, and he's finally become a complete, a complete. Well, from what we saw, a complete yeah. fighter. And I complete. feel like I, I'm gonna so have to see it a couple experience. more times. I still I think there's so much more he can improve and get better at, which we haven't seen the best of him yet. Nope. No. Oh gosh. Who pulls that out of him? Who who It's not gonna be John Jones. You don't think John Jones. You're that adamant that John Jones is When's the last time John Jones knocked anybody out? Okay, but he he's got he's got equal reach. Okay. If not longer. I'm not sure that Nganu's reach. He can John Jones punching you or Nganu punching you. Obviously, Ngannou punching okay. you is way worse. But my point is, can Ngannou hit John Jones? Can 100%. can Ngannou make the connection, or is I John going to use? I think John use... Jones is slow. I don't think he's that fast. Ngannou is explosive, and when you go out there, yeah, you're lifting a lot of weights. But when you come up with a guy who was born that way, you know what I mean? Yeah. Born that size and just that would walk around with that weight all the time. That's that size, that strength. John Jones would be like, what? He's the been heck? living with it. He's so been he's living like, with it, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's just I don't think it's gonna I don't think John Jones is gonna do anything. So you think Francis Ngannou is gonna be the heavyweight goat and nobody's gonna be able to beat him? That's what I'm thinking. You think he's just gonna retire the heavyweight champion? Oh, I don't know about retiring the heavyweight champ. I mean there's gotta be somebody out there coming up. I don't know. I mean, how, think, old, how, old is, think, how old is you're Ngannou? You're so – it's crazy. I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised that you're that adamant that John Jones won't be able to beat Ngannou now. If he goes out there and performs <laughs> like he did – last night or this past weekend yeah um yeah i mean that's a scary dude and i'm, I'm thinking the same thing but I'm i feel thinking, like that's what i'm thinking i feel like it, it at a first before that fight took place this past weekend it was like a no-brainer that john jones could win that fight yeah but then after seeing what he did to stipe and how well he did um and it was this this fight was more of it uh a demonstration of how much more improved Nganu is and not how bad Stipe is or nothing no. like that. Stipe is He's the man the dude. goat still at this point, the heavyweight goat, the man. He's he is an, a, a tremendous fighter. I'm a huge fan of, of him. But after that fight, after seeing how much he's improved, it's like, man, that John Jones fight just got real interesting. Yeah, real interesting. I mean I think that um John Jones' wrestling could maybe neutralize some of the stuff. I mean, maybe a threat, but, you know, when you're trying to move a guy like that for five, five in rounds, you know, and you're not used to carrying that extra weight around that you put That's going to be a thing. Do you do you throw John Jones in there right now, or do you make him fight? Or if you're John Jones, would you want to fight Steve, uh, a couple Nagani of times right now. before? Yeah. Get used to it. See how you feel in, the, in an actual competitive environment with the new weight, with the new bulk, with the new muscle, and then jump into you know 
mm-hmm. fight for the belt. But but look at the people they fought, right? So John Jones pretty much just crushed Cormier, right? Right. I mean, it was a good yeah. fight. He beat, beat him. And then he had Cormier knock out Stipe in the first fight and was piecing him up in the second fight. He got he hit got to the body, body shots. right? The body shots, but he was piecing him up. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, could John Jones beat Stipe? But we know MMA math don't work. It, I know, dude. That's the thing. That's the thing. You never know. I think I think John Jones should take one fight, see how he does there, and then that's where we can choose whether or not he should go up and fight or just say stop, go back down. Yeah, I, I would agree with that too. Just for the sake of the division, let give Derek Lewis that, that rematch, yeah, that man. title shot. Let him get in there. He's got a good shot. He's got a puncher's chance of knocking anybody out, and he's crazy enough to be able to do, do it. Do it. He is. He ain't scared of nobody. So give the title shot right now. To Derek Lewis. Let's go, Derek. Let John Jones fight Stipe or whoever else is at heavyweight right now. I think crushing it's just it. those those guys. <laughs> yeah, I think like, it's just those guys. And like like Cyril Gane, um, the guy who just beat uh, Junior Dos Santos. Rosenstruck. You got Rosenstruck. Rosenstruck. Yeah, there's, there's a few guys. Yeah. Let him fight one of those. Let guys. John Jones fight Rosenstruck, dude. And nah, they'll definitely want to pay, put him with. Or do you think Steve Bay should get an immediate rematch? Well, it's one on one. I think it's fair. It's one on one. But it did go all five rounds, right? The first one. And then this one was just like a what? Second round knockout? Mm hmm. So it's one on one. And it was a knockout, but still, man. Give him, give him a chance. Give, give, yeah. him, give him a chance. Give Steve he a was, chance. He's considered the heavyweight goat right now. So, yeah, yeah. you got to give him that rematch. Rubber match it. Give and then the a, winner, winner. You know, a year and a half off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These guys take forever to fight. A uh, year and a half off, and then. Like can you can say again. anything. I know, dude. I took a year off, dude. Twice. I had broken hands, okay? He's got a broken skull, possibly femur from when he fell. Foot <laughs> oh, maybe God. done. ACL tear. Yeah, dude. He's been over backwards. Oh, tough, tough. No, I just came out look, looking at that, rem- remembering that fall was terrible. It wasn't as bad as Krokop. When Krokop fell and destroyed his oh, ankle. Oh God! When Gonzaga head kicked head him, kicked him, gave him this the the cemetery or what was it the cemetery? Yeah. Back leg roundhouse kick to the dome piece, but yeah, I don't know, man. Um, I think they should run it back. That's me. Yeah. Run it back. Let John Jones fight. Yeah, somebody else, and then or at least, shit. or do you just make all the money you can right now if you're the UFC and just put them with Ngannou? Because you like, like Joe Rogan was saying, that could be one of, if not the biggest fight I of mean, all the time. Way, the way the UFC is going, that that could be a huge possibility. Mm-hmm. Probably that they're talking about that right now as we speak. Or do you just try and you know make it last. farm these guys a little bit and make money off of because Ngannou's a big name now. John Jones is obviously a big name, so they're gonna pull big numbers. Yeah, no matter who they no fight. matter who they fight, do that a couple of times, but then you run the risk of one of them losing, and then they kind of lose that hype. So who yeah, knows, man? True. Make I all the know. money now is probably what they're going to try to go for. Dana I White said he'll, he'll make that fight of, you know, hopefully. Just got Dana got White to. said he'll make it. Yeah, I know. yeah. Well, whatever, man. This past this past weekend, it was some awesome fights. I was excited awesome about fights. it. We a had lot good of time. fun doing it. A you had a little fun. fight party while I had my fight party. I did. We had Icy Mike and Sensei Seth and some of the guys from the school over at the house watching it. Ate some it pizza. Was awesome. Had a good time. Dang it. I sounded like it was a good time. It was. A lot of fun. Man, so, um, yeah, dude. Yeah. Anything else? I think that's it, bro. Think Just check out check out Godzilla. Kinda. Let me know what you guys think in the comments if y'all see it Wednesday. Let me know what you think. Um, and uh, what you thought. What you think Nagano should do next? Should they run it back? Should he fight John Jones? We want to know. And we read them, guys. So let us know in the comments down below. For sure. Sweet tea. Always a pleasure, dude. Absolutely, man. Appreciate you guys hanging out with us for another episode of the What's Up Everybody podcast. Whoop, whoop. Um, y'all are, y'all been amazing. It's been an awesome run and we're going to keep going and, yeah, and grinding them out so it's we been love an awesome it. run we're going to keep going <laughs> yeah it's been an awesome run right, and like we're it's not it over off. we're still going so all right guys appreciate you guys hit us with that subscribe button remember remember throw some comments down below we're trying to get like 7500 likes on this bad boy catch you guys later peace peace